Hi guys, it's Drew here. Welcome back to my channel. Today I have a video that I have honestly been waiting for since last year because last year I did this video and I was just so excited when I did it. And today we are creating DIY holiday gifts. I'm also extremely excited because today's video is sponsored by Vistaprint and I have been a humongous loyal Vistaprint customer for so, so long. I've gotten my, I got my first business cards printed there. I've gotten every single business card, every postcard, every brochure has always been through Vistaprint because they have such high quality items at such an amazing price point. And they have a humongous selection of customizable holiday gift ideas for any of your loved ones, your family, your friends, which is absolutely amazing. And that is exactly what I'm going to be using in today's video. Honestly, guys, these gifts are also really great for birthday presents, anything like that. But I wanted to get this video out sooner than later because I think last year I did it around mid-December. But I want to give you guys the time to really think about these DIY gifts. Like maybe they are things you want to create. Maybe you need to order stuff for them. I created two cards, which are going to go perfectly with my gifts this year. Look at how cute this one is. It has gold foiling on it. I hope you can kind of see that on there. It says season's greetings and then oops it's literally upside down. I'm absolutely crazy. And this one is so cute as well. It says Merry Christmas on it. It has a gold foil down here. They actually offer holiday cards in foiled and unfoiled which is great and then I have this really really pretty wreath that I did on there. I got a calendar which I'm going to share with you the inside of this a little bit later because I want you guys to see this when the actual DIY comes up because it is so so cute and then I also did two different customizable mugs how cute would these be with like your picture on it for your parents or like if you are an adult you can do like your own custom graphic or you can even do a collage like of your children whatever you want to do I actually also have a coupon code for you guys as if the prices are not already great so this is amazing an additional discount you can use code YT holiday 19 I'll put it on the screen for you guys right here and I'll also put it in the description box below and that will get you up to 50% off of select holiday items so definitely check out their website you can um, apply this code and you can get 50% off some of the items on their site, which is just fantastic. So let's just jump on into these DIY holiday gift ideas. Jumping into our first gift here. This is great for anyone who loves stationery or organization. So I'm starting off with three eight and a half by 11 pieces of felt. And I just got these at the craft store. They're 49 cents each, super inexpensive. And I also got this wood board at the craft store. If you are curious, it is 12 inches by 24 inches. And what I'm starting off by doing is folding all of my uh, felt sheets in half hamburger style, if you remember that way. Um, it's just basically you're folding it on the long side. And I'm also going to be marking down the center of that fold at four and a half inches and this is just going to be an indicator for our center seam. So next I'm grabbing my sewing machine and what I'm going to be doing is just sewing around the outside edge, leaving about a quarter inch of space. We are generally just creating a pocket here. Whenever you reach the corner, um, I always suggest leaving your needle down in the corner, pulling up the little foot and then rotating it and then sewing again. So this is kind of the pocket base that we have, but then you're also gonna wanna go in and on the back side where we drew that line, you're gonna sew right across that line. If you feel confident enough to sew a straight line, you don't have to draw that, but it's going to be the back side anyway. So here is what the front looks like. Pretty easy and simple. And I think this mustard color felt makes it look a little bit more expensive than like, I don't know, a more bright color felt. I just like the way that this one looks. It's really, really pretty. And next what I'm doing is I'm going to be uh, cutting off all the additional strands that were just left from the sewing machine. And we are now going to be gluing this down to our board. So I bought this board already pre-cut 12 by 24. Super inexpensive. Uh, so what I did was I just glued this down using a high bond glue. This is a fabric glue, but it also bonds to a lot of other materials. Add a lot of it to the back side, and you're going to glue these down all across the front. So all three of these are going to be glued in a line, making sure to leave a little bit of space in between each. Once you have all of those glued down, I went ahead and I grabbed a drill with a small drill bit and I just went ahead and drilled a hole on the left and the right side of the top. This is just so we can hang it on the wall. You can also use mounting strips if you don't want this look, but I really like the way the macrame cord kind of looked on there. Tie some knots and you could hang this up. And I'm actually gonna be gifting this with my customized Vistaprint mini wall calendar. I think it's so cute. I actually added these really beautiful watercolor moths that um, I think are just so pretty and it makes the page look so stunning, but you can also customize it with photos or whatever whatever your heart desires. Ah, 
I'm really excited for this one, guys. These are the Linen Lavender Eye Pillows, which I think are great for really anybody that just likes self-care. So what I'm starting off by doing is grabbing some linen fabric. This is just like a medium weight linen fabric, and I'm cutting a part of it off because I actually decided I wanted to dye some of it just to show you guys that it's an option as well. So I put in some navy dye. I didn't use that much though, which is why I think the color didn't come out navy, but I actually love the color it came out as. So I dyed just a portion of the fabric because I'm also gonna be creating some natural toned ones as well. You can dye them or you can leave them normal. So next step is we're going to be cutting some linen pieces down to nine inches by four inches. And you're going to need two pieces per eye mask or like eye weighted bag thing. I don't really exactly know what to call it. I think it's just like a an eye mask sort of a thing. You can also just use it kind of as like a aromatherapy item as well. So what I'm doing is cutting these out with a nice pair of sharp fabric scissors. And then I'm gonna use some pins just to pin the shapes together on three sides. You're gonna to wanna to leave one side open. So we're only gonna be sewing three sides. Once those are all fully pinned down, you're going to use the same sewing machine. I actually just used the same exact thread color as the last project, and I sewed around three of the edges. And sorry, I completely forgot to grab like a close-up shot of that, but I just sewed around three edges where one of the shorter ends had an opening because that is where we're going to be adding all the fun stuff. So I have some lavender buds that I got online, and I also have some rice. And the reason that we're using both of these is the lavender buds act as such a great smell, um, which is the main reason for using those. Um, and lavender serves so many different purposes and like mental health and insomnia. There's lots of really great benefits to lavender and I'm using the rice actually. So you can put this in the freezer or put this in the microwave for just like a couple of seconds. It will actually heat up and the rice will hold the heat or the cold. So I'm using about one third parts of rice to two thirds parts of lavender. And then the last step in creating these eye bags is just to pin off the open end and just use a couple of pins to do so right along that edge because we're going to sew this off that way nothing leaks out. And you're you're gonna repeat it on all your other ones. If you wanna create multiple of these at a time, it's a great idea. You can do so many like really pretty colors of like soft dyed linens and then fill them up and sew them like shown here. Yes, I sew over my pins because I live on the edge and I learned that you could do that if you wanted to. Um, and then basically what I did was I just clipped off excess string and these are your finished eye bags, but we cannot forget about the dyed one. Look how pretty. It actually turned into like a lavender color, which I thought was perfect. Sewed that shut and I actually made this one just an inch shorter. And I'm going to be wrapping these up really pretty and pairing them with the really soft and kind of subtle foiled holiday card that has the wreath on it. I think this is so pretty and perfect for the vibe. Next, we're gonna make some macrame keychains. And this is probably the most tedious project in the video, but it's also the most cost effective. So I'm starting off with some gold keychain hooks, and I'm also gonna be using some baker's twine for one of the projects. And I'm also going to be using some macrame cord for one of the projects. This is a three millimeter macrame cord. So what I'm gonna start off by doing is I'm actually cutting three strands of the macrame cord, and I'm going to be doing like a lark's head knot to attach it. Pretty simple. You're just gonna pull the ends of the strands through the loop and attach it, and then just stick this down to a surface that's not gonna move, like your tabletop or whatever you wanna use. And next I'm gonna be creating some knots. So I'm using my left strand to go over the four centers, the right strand to go over the left, under, and then up through the hole. And you're gonna repeat this process. So basically um, I started off with my left strand over the centers, next I'm gonna do my right strand over the centers. And what this is doing is creating a like section of square knots to wrap around these center strands. This is called like a square knot sinet or sine, I'm sure of the exact word for that but if you do this and you rotate from left strand over the centers to right strand over the centers it's going to look exactly as I show here but if you just continue doing left strand over the centers the entire way down it's actually gonna spiral like if you guys remember in my DIY IKEA hacks when I did that tray um, hanging tray that actually spiraled So next what I did was I grabbed some embroidery floss and this is just like a personal touch. Um, you can just wrap these around your ending strands and I actually have those two left strands kind of popping out the left and the right because I want to add a bit of glue before I cut them off. But we have the four center strands and I'm just using macrame cording to simply wrap around the four to kind of create an ending to this keychain. I do want there to be tassels. So what I'm doing is just adding a bit of fabric glue, pulling that knot tight there. And then once that's dry, I'm gonna cut off the extras. I did cut off off those ending pieces, leaving about four inches of space and glued them. 
So let's jump into the second method. So this one's a little bit more challenging, but very doable. So I started off by cutting five strands of Baker twine and I'm doing five of those little lark's head knots to attach them to the keychain, taping it down to start. So what we're gonna be doing is actually just creating a four over the top of the strand, starting with your left strand. And you're going to be knotting two times per strand. And this is going to create like a little loop on top. So if you guys remember how to create friendship bracelets, this is your basic friendship bracelet um, kind of knot. It's the one you use for literally Literally everything. I'm going to pop up the exact name on the screen. So if you want to Google it to get a little bit more clarification, because I feel like it's so challenging to share this with you guys sometimes. So what I'm doing is I'm going into the center points because we're creating almost this like arrowhead chevron shape. And you're going to repeat the process. It's literally very, very repetitive. So you're going to start with your outermost strand and then just kind of weave it all the way to the center and then go from your right strand and go into the center. And then once you meet the center, you're going to attach them together. So as you can See here, I'm attaching them together with a little knot. And next, what we're doing is after you have a little bit of this, I'm actually going back to the first one that we created and doing the same exact square knot method um, just to create like a little bit of variation. You could do that chevron all the way down if you wanted to, but I'm just doing a little bit of variation. I'm also going to be adding a wood bead on there just to add a little interest. And you're just going to square knot right around the wood bead as if it wasn't even there. Same exact method. It's super simple and easy. Add a couple more sections of that square knot and you're going to do it on the right side as well and then we're just going to transition right back to that chevron that we started with so you're just going to go from the leftmost strand and to the center attach them once you meet the center which is going to pull those two sections together and then just weave it till you have a good amount of that chevron stranding again so i'm going to do probably like six or seven rows of that chevron just again going from the left strand all the way into the center and then from the right strand into the center and meeting in the middle and then just attaching them as well. And also guys, if you click the gear on this video, you can actually slow it down, which might be a little bit more helpful if you wanna take the steps a little bit more simply. And then what I'm doing is just gathering the strands in the end and just kind of creating again, like a section that we did with the other one with the embroidery floss. I'm just doing it with the same cording, cutting off those strands for tassels. And this is your finished keychain. I'm gonna be pairing my keychains with the gold foiled seasons greeting card. I feel like this is a little bit more bright, quirky and fun, which matches the personal of the keychain. And our last project is one that I always wanted to receive but never actually got, and that is a hot chocolate kit. These are kind of everywhere, I feel like, but I wanted to share with you guys how to create one that was super cute and um, personalized as well. So I started off with some of these little plastic cones I got online and scooped in some hot chocolate mixture. And I also added some marshmallows, of course, the mini kind, because those are the best ones for sure. And then I tied it off with a bit of red baker's twine, but you can also use like macrame cord, whatever you have on hand. I just had this in my stash from last Christmas and I tied a double knot and then what I'm doing is I liked the element of adding an additional piece so I added on this cute little wooden spoon and I just did a little bow around the wooden spoon and I think these hot chocolate cones turned out adorable and I'm creating four of them for this kit but you can customize it you can give someone two of them with two mugs whatever you want to do so I'm just repeating the process on all four of the hot chocolate cones. I also picked up these little rustic wood slice coasters just to add it to the little gift box element of this. And I'm gonna construct this in a wooden crate and I'm adding in some of this craft crinkle paper, which we all kind of love, but also really don't like. Um, and then I'm also gonna be putting in my custom printed Vista print mugs. These are so cute. I did a Fox one and then I also did a hand-drawn tools pattern that I've been using a lot lately in my design. I really think it's a cute little element. And I'm just gonna construct this with the four mugs, the four coasters and the four hot chocolate cones and I also decided to add one of those gold foiled seasons greeting cards just to add the instructions for the hot chocolate and also a memo to the recipient.
Okay, guys, so I hope that you enjoyed those DIY gifts. I think that they are such cute ideas for really anybody. I wanted to make these very universal gifts, not things that were meant for a boy, for a girl, for someone older, for someone younger. These are just great all around universal gifts for really anybody. And I also think the Vista print items, like the cards, the mug, the calendar, just paired so nicely. And I'm really excited to give these as gifts to my family and friends. I'm gonna be making much more of them. And then also, of course, I ordered quite a bit of the cards uh, because I'm gonna be using these in all of my gift wrapping this year. I think they're so pretty and so cute. So don't forget to head over to Vista Print site. Gonna be linked below um, and use code YTHOLIDAY19 to get 50% off of select holiday items, which is great. And I would love to know, are you guys gonna be DIYing any gifts for your family members or friends this holiday season? Please leave them in the comment section below because I love more ideas because I know for a fact I'm gonna be DIYing a ton of gifts. I might even do another one of these videos before Christmas. So leave a thumbs up if you want to see that as well. I think that's really all. Have a amazing rest of your day. Happy holidays holidays everybody and I cannot wait to get this Christmas started. I'll see you soon. Bye guys. Thanks so much again for Vistaprint for sponsoring today's video.